Welcome back. At this time, we had scheduled former Prime Minister David Cameron. And that session is going to take place. But before it starts, I'm delighted to announce that we have just received a message from number 10 from Prime Minister Boris Johnson. And we're about to play that message to you. And we understand perfectly why he couldn't make it to be with us on Monday for a variety of reasons, and we're so happy that he's now sent this message to us. I'd just like to say that, personally, I've worked with Boris Johnson when he was mayor of London, I was on his Promote London Council, and I've seen firsthand how committed he is to business, what a friend to business he is, and how really passionate about the whole of the business community and business that he is. So I'm really happy that he's going to be speaking to us now. And what I've also seen over these past eight months is the collaboration between government and business. That's what's helped us get through this crisis and is going to help us get through it looking ahead. So I look forward to hearing what the Prime Minister has to say. Let's hear from Prime Minister Boris Johnson. First, I want to apologise for missing my slot on Monday, and I hope you will understand that this was entirely caused by the pressures of dealing with the pandemic and the need to keep Parliament informed. I'm very grateful both to Karen and to Carolyn uh, for fitting me in now, and I promise I won't be long. But I want to say something about this government's commitment to you, to the CBI, uh, to British business, and about the vital importance of our relationship and indeed our partnership with business now as we tackle this crisis and in the years ahead. And so first, I want to apologise to all of you who are experiencing the frustrations and the nightmare of the COVID world. I know how tough it has been for you and still is, and I'm full of admiration for the determination you've shown in persevering through this crisis. I want to, to thank you for the heroic efforts you've made to look after your empl employees, to, to make your premises COVID secure, putting in perspex screens, all the trouble uh, you've gone to, and complying with the kind of diktats I never believed we would have to impose, which I assure you go completely against every free market instinct I possess. And believe me, we will end these autumn measures on December the 2nd when they expire. But we have to get the R down now to protect our NHS, save thousands of lives if we're to get on with our plan to exit this crisis with solutions that have been made possible thanks to the efforts and enterprise of British business. I want to thank the distilleries that have been turning out hand gel, the fashion houses that started making PPE, the umpteen manufacturers including Formula One, racing car makers, vacuum clean makers, you know who you, who you are, who turned your hand uh, at phenomenal speed to making the ventilators, which we still have and which are a vital resource. It's thanks to British technical innovation that we are now in a far better position than we were during the first wave. We have drugs trialled in Britain, corticosteroids such as dexamethasone. We have the prospect of a vaccine in the first quarter of next year, with several British companies among the front runners. And we have fantastic new testing systems, lamp tests, lateral flow tests, with some of the most promising devices already made in this country. This week, we will begin a huge programme of rapid turnaround testing, starting with the great city of Liverpool, to drive down the R, the reproduction rate of the disease, to find the positive cases and help them to self-isolate and so to interrupt the transmission, to reduce the spread of this disease. 
We're going to manufacture new lateral flow tests in this country. And that is how we want to get the R down, get the epidemic halving again, to get this country moving again and get this economy motoring. And as we do that, we will be with you, with British business, as we have been throughout. With over £200 billion worth of support already, coronavirus bills, uh, furlough, uh, you name it, uh, bounce back loans, we will do whatever it takes to back British business. Because I know that when the recovery comes, and it will come, it will happen entirely thanks to the efforts of the people who are watching me now, all of us, on this Zoom call today. People who understand how hard it is to innovate, to come up with a new product or idea, to find someone to fund it, to get it to market. You will drive our recovery. You will create the jobs. You will give young people the opportunities they're looking for. And our job in government, here in Number 10, is to use every tool of government to unite and level up across the whole UK and with better infrastructure, better education, and with investment in ever better technology to create for you the platform and the environment for growth and investment. And that means on our part, on our part over £600 billion of investment in our future prosperity, including everything from high-speed rail, northern powerhouse rail, to super-vast broadband across every part of the country. It means modernising and speeding up our antiquated planning system. And it means helping young people to achieve the dream of home, home ownership with new long-term fixed-rate mortgages. It means investing in skills with a lifetime skills guarantee, breaking down the pointless and outdated divide between further and higher education. And it means a new green industrial revolution in which we create hundreds of thousands of jobs in wind power, carbon capture and storage, hydrogen retrofitting, solar power, uh, electric vehicles, battery technology, and every aspect of the low carbon technology in which this country so often leads the world. We want to use this moment, this historic opportunity, to address the yawning gap, which is so big and so unnecessary, in the productivity of the cities and regions of this country. Now is the moment to change that after so many decades of neglect, to build back better, to build back faster, to build back greener. I've talked to all kinds of businesses during this pandemic, literally hundreds. But I want to pay a particular tribute to a man who's opened the world's biggest and perhaps the world's only underground trampoline centre in a disused Welsh coal mine because he has provided me with my closing metaphor. No matter how deep the hole you think you're in, you can always bounce back. And that is what we will do together. Thank you all for your patience and your hard work. The door here in number 10 is always open to you and to the CBI. Let's get through this crisis and bounce back better next year and in the years ahead. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much to the Prime Minister for those words, for that message. And really good to hear from Boris Johnson. Carolyn, what, what, are, what are your views, what are your reflections on what he's just said? Well, Karen, I mean, I think we heard some um, really strong messages there. You know, great that he was able to, uh, to, to, to come and deliver those to us today. I mean, first for me was just that kind of recognition of how incredibly challenging the pandemic is for business. Um, so the, that phrase, uh, do everything it takes, we've heard it before. I don't think we've heard it uh, from the Prime Minister directly to us before. Um, I think a lot of people would have heard him say the, the lockdown will end at the beginning of December. I mean, that would be incredibly helpful. The commitment to uh, mass testing, something that we have asked for. So I think a lot there around the pandemic itself. And actually very nice to hear the thanks, I think, for the contribution that business has made, which I think has been, been pretty profound. But that there was also that longer term picture around uh, backing British business. And I, I think 
We have seen that uh, in the Prime Minister as mayor. Uh, we know it is very much his instinct. But to have some of those um, real um, messages around green, around build, 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 around infrastructure, around skills, these are all things that we've been talking about here over the last three days. So really uh, powerful messages there. And then I think thirdly, that really important signal that he gave that his door is always open to the CBI and to business. Because if there's one thing I think we have seen over the last few days in spades is the power of two-way, the power of dialogue, the power of trying to solve problems together. And so I think our response back to him, Karen, is uh, our door is uh, always open to number 10 as well. Um, the best examples through the last seven months have been where business and government have worked together on, as the Prime Minister said, on the loan packages and on the rescue packages. Let's absolutely make this partnership work for the country. Uh, and that, um, as the CBI, I think we've shown over the last few days, that commitment to building back better is incredibly strong. It is best done in partnership through uh, not just conversation, but also through dialogue. Uh, and uh, thank you to the Prime Minister for making the time to be with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And uh, to me, that message from Boris is the Boris that I've known going back many years, the pro-business, business-friendly Boris Johnson, and now the business-friendly Prime Minister. So thank you once again, Prime Minister, for that message. Uh, you said that your door and Number 10's door is always open to business and to the CBI, and the CBI's door and business's door is always open to you and to government, and we look forward to working together collaboratively to get out of this crisis and build back our economy. So thank you very much. Uh, we are now going to uh, take a break, and at 12 noon, we will have former Prime Minister David Cameron with us. So please join us again at 12 noon. Thank you very much.